Good afternoon. We're here from Partick, Free Church of Scotland, continuing. And we want to bring something of the good news of the gospel to you this afternoon. It's a real pleasure to be able to be on the street and to be able to say something to you as you pass by concerning the most important person in all of the world. And of course, we're talking about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. I realize today that many people will be largely ignorant concerning Christianity. You maybe know something, you've heard something, but Christianity is about a person. It's about a glorious person. It's about the Son of God who became the Son of Man. It's about the Son of God who left heaven, left the realms of glory, and he came to this world, to this sin-cursed, barren world. And he came with a purpose, he came with a goal, and with an aim in mind. And he was sent, he was sent by God the Father on a mercy mission. And his mission was that he might come and save people, save his people. For the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. He himself did say, I have not come to call the righteous to repentance, but sinners. And he said, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And before we will ever appreciate the Lord Jesus, before we will appreciate what he has done, before we will have any comprehension about what Christianity is about, we need to recognize our plight before God. We need to truly recognize what we are in the sight of God. And truly this is not a pleasant thing for us, but it is important that we think on this for a moment. The Bible describes us in various ways. Let me read one or two verses to you this afternoon as you pass by from Romans, from Paul's letter to the Romans. You will find this in your Bibles. Don't take my word for it. Pick up your own Bibles and read it. You'll find it in Romans chapter 3 beginning at verse 10 where the apostle begins to outline human nature. He begins to outline what we are like before God. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher, with their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp, that uh, serpents, is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their, sweet, their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace have they not known. And he says to sum it all up, there is no fear of God before their eyes. We may well ask ourselves, who is the apostle describing? Well, he is describing all of mankind. The apostle is describing you, and he is describing me. This is the Bible's verdict upon us. There is none righteous, no, not one. And what that simply means is, as far as God is concerned, none of us is righteous. There is no difference, the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You realize then it's perfectly possible for us to live 
a law-abiding life and for the law of the land never to accuse us. But the law of God does. And God does accuse us. And this is God's verdict upon your life and upon my life. For there is no difference. There is none righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that's the predicament that we face ourselves in. In the year, as this year comes to an end, in 2019, this is the predicament that every one of us faces. There is none righteous in the sight of God. And because of that, friends, because we are not declared righteous in God's sight, we have a real problem. We have a problem that we cannot address ourselves. The problem is that of our sin. This is a great obstacle. This is a great barrier between us and God. You see, God is a holy God. The Bible describes God like this. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil and canst not look upon iniquity. That's the great God of heaven. That's the God who brought all things into being. That's the God who has created us. And that's the God whom we are accountable unto. One who is holy, one who is absolutely pure, and who cannot look upon iniquity. He cannot look upon sin. It is absolutely impossible for him. And therefore you will see our problem. If we are declared sinners in his sight, then he must deal with that. He cannot overlook sin. He cannot. It would be against his nature. You may well be wondering if you're listening, if you're thinking, if God is holy and he cannot tolerate sin, and we are sinful, how can we possibly be reconciled? How can we possibly enter in to the presence of God? How can we possibly be accepted in God's sight? Here is where the Lord Jesus Christ comes in. He is a mediator. He is a go-between. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave his life a ransom for all to be testified in due time. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ came to deal with our greatest problem. He came to deal with that problem that we ourselves cannot address. That is our sin. He has dealt with it. How could he possibly deal with it? How could the Son of God by coming man, how could he possibly deal with mankind's greatest problem? Friends, you have to go to Calvary. Friends, you have to go there to the cross. There you have to see that the Lord Jesus Christ suffered and died in the room and in the place of sinners. He paid the price. He offered up his life as a substitute. You know, there's a great exchange that goes on in the gospel. What is the exchange? The exchange is that Christ took upon himself our sin. And those that believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ receive his righteousness. Yes, a wonderful transaction takes place. God has punished him in our room and in our place. He suffered the wrath of God on the tree at Calvary. There God punished him instead of sinners. And here is the very essence, the very heartbeat of the gospel. Today, friends, you are told, that if you will believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, you will have your sins forgiven. You will have the gift of eternal life. You will be declared righteous in the sight of God only because another has paid the price on your behalf, namely the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the season when multitudes will be going out and they will be buying gifts. They will be buying sometimes very expensive gifts. They'll be looking for a special gift for a special person 
or special persons. And they will spend a vast amount of money, possibly on these gifts. But friends, we want to consider that God has given to mankind some 2,000 years ago a gift that the Bible describes as beyond calculation, an unspeakable, priceless gift. What is that gift? That gift is the gift of His Son. His eternally begotten Son became a man. Why did He become a man? He became a man in order that He might be able to suffer and to die. You see, if the Lord Jesus Christ, if the Son of God had remained in heaven, He could never save anyone. He could never save anyone. But when He became man, when He took upon Himself our form and our nature, He did it with the intent that He might be able to go to Calvary and there to suffer and there to die. I can see some people laughing at this glorious and wonderful story. But you know, friend, there is no story like this. There is no message like this. This is the message you need to hear. This message is from heaven. This is God's word to you this afternoon. He's telling you about an unspeakable and a priceless gift that he has given to mankind. And I regret to say that many of you are discarding this gift, are rubbishing this gift. But friends, you want to consider this because without Christ you have no hope. You have absolutely no hope whatsoever. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. And today, friends, with all our failings, with all our faults, we are here this afternoon and we want to bring you the good news of the gospel, that Jesus Christ died to save the ungodly that Jesus Christ came to seek and to save that which was lost, that he gave us life a ransom for many, and you are urged today to come and to believe upon him, to receive him. But how can you receive someone you don't know about? That's why we want to tell you about this person. We don't want to keep this person to ourselves. We have a glorious message. We have a wonderful savior to proclaim. We have one who has tasted death for us. He has gone into the grave, but on the third day, friends, he rose victorious over the grave. We're not asking you to put your faith and your hope and your trust upon a dead person. No, we're telling you about the Son of God who became the Son of Man, who laid down his life in order to save sinners and who was punished suffered and who died and was put in the tomb but the third day he rose victorious over the grave and this same person that we proclaim to you this afternoon one day he will come again ah yes i can hear you laughing ah yes i can hear your scorns but one day friends the lord jesus shall come back the bible tells us look at it in Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, even those that pierced him, and all the nations shall wail and mourn because of him. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The day will come when he will return. Many did not think he would ever come the first time. 2,000 years ago, many didn't think he would come. But he came according to the word of God. He came and fulfilled prophecy to the very letter. Look it up in your Bibles. This is not a secret. This is not a mystery. It's there in your Bibles. In Genesis, the first book of the Bible, 
when our first parents sinned, they were given a promise, they were told that one would come who would crush the head of the serpent, that is Satan, and in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them under the law. And that's what happened some 2,000 years ago. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. That great and that glorious person humbled himself, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Why did he undertake this? Why did he do this? Why did the Son of God leave the realms of glory and come to this world to suffer and die? He did it to save sinners. And he says to you today in the gospel, to young and to old, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come then and consider this great and glorious person, the Lord Jesus Christ, the eternally begotten Son of God, who so humbled himself and came to this world to give up his life as a substitute in order that sinners like you and I might know the gift of eternal life. It is a pleasure and a wonderful privilege, and yes, we have to acknowledge a responsibility to be able to be on the streets this afternoon. We're here from Partick, Free Church of Scotland continuing. We meet at 2 Thornwood Terrace. We meet tomorrow, the Lord's Day, 11 a.m. and again 6.30 p.m. We would love to see you there. We simply want to tell you about Christ. I realize today you have many things in your mind and many of you are not thinking about the Lord Jesus Christ. But one day, friends, one day, the day is coming when this person, his name, shall be absolutely glorious. The Bible tells us, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the person we're talking about. This is Christ. This is the one who suffered and died and rose again and who's coming back. We want you to know him. We want you to, to have him as your Lord and Savior. That's why we want to tell you about him. Because we realize today that many people are absolutely ignorant of real, genuine Christianity. You see, Christianity revolves around a person. It revolves around the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not about rules. It's not about regulations. It is about what he has done. Why has he come? Why did he do what he did? Why did he suffer? Why did he die? He did it, friends, in order to save the ungodly, to those who could not save themselves. And that's us all. None of us can save ourselves. We're all sinners by nature. We're all sinners by practice. And we need a savior. And that savior is none other than the Lord Jesus. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And today we commend this person to you that you would seek him, seek the Lord whilst he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts and let him return unto his God and he will have mercy upon him. May God bless his word to you uh, this afternoon.